for our missionaries. We want to pray for some lost, lost souls over there. Last week, I think uh, uh, Brother B.R. had two folks, uh, two young children were saved over here in the, uh, 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 the youth ministry. And I praise God for that. Amen. Give God a hand for that. Amen. Praise God. And uh, we was able to, uh, had to preach a, uh, a funeral last Tuesday, I believe, where Sister Sue's uh, brother died. And there was a few people got saved in that congregation of about 120 people probably there. So I give God the glory again. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to hear some messages from our missionary group that's over there, That, by the way, that come out of uh, the Liberty Ministries uh, 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 church uh, that's on the missionary field. And one of the main focus for them is to win souls. And we need to pray every day all week that God's going to move and they're going to win uh, and, and be directed by the Lord in everywhere that they go. Amen. And uh, I'm looking forward to some great testimonies coming back here. Amen. And by the way, there's some of you here, I want you to pray. Next uh, year, I want you to ask God to lay it on your heart uh, that you get to go and do some missionary work. Amen. There's some of you in here that I know that God's going to be calling to go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I see it. And I'm excited about some is going to get to go. Praise God. So you be praying about it. Maybe next year God will provide a way that you can go and work on the missionary field because it's going to change your life. Uh, you're going to just grow spiritually in a mighty way. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I see some of you. Yeah. Praise God. It's going to be exciting, y'all. I'm excited. I feel the Lord this morning. been praying and want God to just move in a mighty way. And I'll tell you right now, me and uh, Becky was able to take uh, Sister Jeanette and some of them up to the airport in Charlotte yesterday morning. We got to see the sun rise, come up and everything, you know. But the problem I had, Gary, was when I delivered all that luggage and the kitchen sink that they had with them and everything. You know how women are, excuse me. <laughs> Uh-oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. But anyway, praise God, a lot of that was clothes for children that don't have clothes. Robert can tell you right now, these kids over there that's naked that don't have clothes, and a lot of that was Betty, Betty and them took a lot of clothes and stuff that they're going to be able to uh, help those children with over there. But uh, when we got, got them unloaded and started leaving everything, I, I got the burning in me, Woody. Hey, I'm ready to go again. There's work to be done over there too, amen. There's plenty of work to be done here, but there's work to be done over there, and God calls different people to do different things. Each one of us has a purpose for Almighty God, and you cry out to God and let him focus on what God has for you and what he wants you to do, amen. Praise God. He loves you so much, And uh, but we're gonna, we want to continue to pray for our churches. We got three churches over there, and we just pray anyway. I'll, 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 I better not get in that right now. Pray for them. Pray for them all week, y'all, uh, the next few weeks. Okay. And we need to pray for lost souls. Continue to do that in the community. I don't know on the missionary field. In that camera right there, God moves uh, uh, with the gospel all over the world uh, through that camera. I praise God for it. <coughs> and we appreciate <coughs> and invite our Internet folks here this morning. We pray <coughs> that God's going to touch you and move on you right where you're at. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Now, and that God, uh, the devil won't deceive you. A lot of people in the world's deceived. They think they can do certain things. I tell you right now, if you're serving God and God, uh, you're going to be doing good things. If you ain't serving God, you're going to be doing bad things. Uh, 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 the peoples of the world are deceived sometimes and they're doing things against humanity God ain't pleased with. There'll be a reckoning day for that. But we're going to pray. Uh, you know, I want to tell you all this morning, God loves each one of us. That's what we got to start projecting is that love. We want to be in one accord with that love. I'm, I'm telling you, when that happens, the power of God's going to move and touch the congregation and the people on that Internet all over the world. I'm here to tell you this morning, I've been studying this week, and I was looking, you know, uh, you know, we look at some of the things going on in the world and everything. Did you know when you was the enemy of God before you got saved, when you was the enemy of God before you got saved, did you know that God loved you anyway? Ain't that something? God's put that in us. We need to do that. Our enemy. We're supposed to love our enemy too. And it's hard. Sometimes we have to ask for special grace from God to help us love our enemy. Amen? But God can help us. Amen. Now we're going to pray for the sick. Mike Schlegel uh, is having real bad problems. He, he did come home from the hospital 
He's got uh, some stuff going on. He's got double pneumonia too, I think. So we're going to pray God's going to heal Mike. Sharon, you know, has got a broke foot. They've been having a hard time here uh, the last uh, uh, few weeks. We want to pray for Donna. She lost her husband. Keep uh, remembering her in prayer. We want to pray for Christina, lost her mother. We want to pray for Sister Sue, lost her brother. And uh, we want to pray for those families that got to help them during their grieving. And uh, Bud was telling me a man uh, that he knows, and I know <clears throat> his granddaughter has a, a little, uh, she's a little bitty baby, I think, and about six months old, and she's got some heart problems. So we want to pray that God's going to touch uh, uh, those uh, ones we're talking about here. <clears throat> and we want to pray this morning we'll be united in one mind and one accord. That's what we want. We get united in one mind and one accord. Guess what? Something's going to happen here. God's going to move. That's what's going to happen. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and just invite him in to take care of this shaving. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. Thank you. I ain't got it rolled down. <laughs> there comes Miss Donna right there. We need to pray for Joanne, too. Joanne's real sick. And uh, she can't come. She only lives about... Uh, less than a block from here, but she's having a real bad headache. We're going to pray God's going to touch her and heal that and help her to feel good she'll be here tonight. We want God to touch her. Let's everybody just go in corporate prayer right here. Y'all just agree with me. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we love you and we praise you this morning. We worship you. We magnify you. We glorify you this morning, God. Lord, it's an honor to be in your house this morning. I sense your presence in a mighty way this morning, God. Lord, I feel your anointing here already, God. I feel your power here, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you're going to come in, Lord, and have your way, Holy Ghost, in this place. Move in a special way, God. Lord, touch our missionaries. God, I lift them up to you. I pray the anointing of God will fall on each one of them. I pray you'll anoint their mouth to share the gospel all over that island. I pray that souls are going to be saved, God, and we're going to give you the glory. Lord, we thank you for the testimonies that's going to come back from our island confirming your word, God. Thank you so much, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. And Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for Joanne. I pray you touch her body. I pray you heal her body right to where she's at. God, touch her head. Uh, Lord, I just uh, ask God in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you touch her. Uh, Lord, I pray that your kingdom come from heaven, uh, uh, Lord, uh, on earth uh, as it is in heaven is going to come down here, God, and you'll touch her. Uh, the headache is not there in heaven. Uh, Lord, her, her uh, uh, equilibrium messed up there is not in heaven. God, I pray you'll heal her as it is in heaven. God, touch her body and heal her. God, in Jesus' name, Lord, Lord, be with Donna as they grieve over uh, the loss of their loved one. Be with Christina as they grieve over the loss of the loved one and sue as they grieve over the loss of the loved one. God, I lift them up to you, God. Be with Paul's granddaughter, Lord. Heal that baby, God, totally. Let her get a good uh, record when they check it out, God, in Jesus' name. A good report, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Oh, Lord, be with our, our churches in the Dominican. I pray you bless those folks this morning. I pray the anointing on the preachers this morning in a mighty way, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray, God, as our, our, our evangelistic group goes out, you'll give them a mighty anointing to minister tonight and this week in a special way, God, all over that island, God, in Jesus' name. We give you praise. We give you glory this morning, God. Touch Mike uh, uh, Slago, Lord, and heal his body, God. Take the pain away. Heal his lungs. Heal him. Help him, God, in Jesus' name. Touch Sharon and continue to heal that foot, God, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> we love you this morning, and we praise you, God. And, God, we pray for lost souls this morning. We pray, God, that, uh, Lord, uh, you'll just save souls on uh, the Internet, God, uh, uh, all over the world, uh, in the community. Help us, God, to win souls for the kingdom of God, Lord. We ask that, God. And, God, I ask you to put uh, our congregation in one accord this morning uh, that your power and your anointing will flow uh, in this place, God, and touch uh, needs in this congregation this morning and needs on that Internet, God. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you, brother, brother Richard. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. <laughs> Won't y'all play a song? When they play the first song right here, I want everybody to just go around and shake everybody's hand real quick. God loves you, and let's just uh, shake everybody's hand, and, uh, and uh, as they play, 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 play this first song, <laughs> I'm wanting to speak. Uh, my mind's running faster than my mouth is, and it's really fast. <laughs> hey, man, everybody stand up and give somebody a shake. 
God loves you. God loves you. Ask God to come on in. I had a question. Hurry up. We got it.
Let's focus on him. He's a mighty God. He loves you. How great is our God? How great is he? Oh, hallelujah. He made the sun come up. He's got the air we breathe. He got shoes on our feet. We need to praise him and worship him. How great is our God? How great is our King? Hallelujah. Just worship him. If you ain't took time to worship him this week, right now, take time. Raise your hand. Oh, just give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his mighty name. He's worthy. Hallelujah. How great is it? How great is it in your life? He loves you. Praise him. Praise him. Worship him. Ha ha. He loves you. Yes. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah! We praise you. Oh, we praise you, God. We praise you, God. Praise Him right now. Praise Him. Worship Him. Hallelujah! Be on. Be on. I need you. Just oh, 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 I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Robert, I need you. Keep singing, brother. Praise God. I want y'all to follow me around. Come on. I want y'all to agree. We're going to pray for some people in here. God's laid on my heart. I want to pray for them right now. We're going to, y'all keep in worship. We're going to pray for some people. God, show me these prayer right now. I want you to keep praising Him. Lift them hands up. Come with me. Yeah, he's a God We want to pray for you. God's telling me to pray for some people this morning. Lord, touch my sister, God. Lord, I pray, God, I speak health on her body, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak uh, in the name of Jesus, God. Hey, she is healed. She is healed. Oh, Lord, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on heaven and on earth. God, there's no sickness uh, in heaven. I speak that kingdom right now. Oh, my sister, right now. You healing her body right now. In the name of Jesus, God, you healing her. Oh, God, touch every, every artery. Touch every speed in his body right now. Pain go from her right now. Oh, Lord, uh, she's going to function with good health, God. Oh, Lord, she's got a purple submission. You call her. God, come upon her right now. Hey, la, 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 in the name of Jesus, touch my sister. Lord. I lift her up to you, God. Oh, God, heal. Heal her body. Heal her body. Heal her body. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, Jesus' name above. Hey, cut the day. Lord, I pray you touch my brother right now, God. Lord, you know you're a king. You're a king, Lord. Lord, this is our, your servant now, God. Touch him, God. Touch him, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God. Right now, God. Those needs, God. Right now, God. He's standing here for Paul. That baby's healed in the name of Jesus. He's concerned about that grandbaby. God, because of the Lord, he's a believer. That he believed it. You can pray. We can pray and that baby be healed. We're claiming it right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We're claiming it. We're claiming it. We're claiming it. Jesus' name. Would you stand in for Joanne? <laughs> Oh God, oh God, oh God, touch Joanne. Touch Joanne. Thelma standing in for Joanne right now, God. I pray, God, that you touch Joanne and heal her body, God. Heal her body, God. Take that headache pain away. I command it to go, Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, God, as it is in heaven. 
Oh, God, take that headache away. Heal everybody, God, in the name of Jesus. Let it come forth, God. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. In Jesus' name, God. And we thank you in advance, God. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory, God. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory, God. Thank you for touching our sister, God. Oh, God, the pain's gone right now. In Jesus' name, we command it, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give you praise. Give you praise, God. Touch your sister, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Eto bo 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 shuto da maha la kaba shunda. Eto ba ba ha la ba shukote. Shukote. Eto ba ba shunda. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch my sister and heal her body, God. I speak, God, to those things. God, I command them to go from her, God. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, you heal her sugar diabetes right now, God. Uh, Lord, I'm speaking the word, God. But, Lord, there is no sugar diabetes in heaven. Oh, Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, heal her body totally right now, God. Uh, I speak it, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I speak it, God. I claim it in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I speak healing in her body. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I speak it, God. Pain go from her. Sickness go from her in Jesus' name. I command it, God. Uh, I rebuke you. Go from her in Jesus' name. I lose four angels around her. Apply the blood of Jesus over her right now. Jesus. Lord, help her. Help her, God, in the name of Jesus, God. That grief, God. God, help her, God. Help her to heal from that, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I lift her up to you. I lift her family up to you right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Help her. Pain. Go from her. In the name of Jesus. God, uh, help her, God, replace that grief with joy. Joy, God, help her, God. Just knowing the truth, God. Lord, uh, touch her. Heal her from that right now, God. Broken heart, uh, I command you to be healed. In the gospel, it says in 103, you heal the broken and hearted. Heal our sister right now. Help her, sister, God. In the name of Jesus, let it come forth, God. Let it come forth, God. In the name of Jesus, there's power. There's power in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for my sister. Lord, I pray that the jaw's going to be healed. I, I, I ask that that pain go from her, God. Oh, Lord, I ask that God, in the name of Jesus, pain will go from her right now, God. We're claiming it, God. Oh, Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. As it is in heaven, Lord, there's no pain. There's no problem with the jaw, Lord. I pray that it's going to uh, function properly, Lord. I pray the pain go from her, God. Lord, she cries out to you. Father, you, God, you're the healer, you're the deliverer, you're the anointed one, God, you're the Christ, and we worship you. Your name has power and authority, and we pray in this in the name of Jesus. We pray in it in the name of Jesus, son. And you said we're to agree on touching anything. Lord, we ask that her body functions properly, God, that she's healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we ask that God. Thank you, 
In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. God, you heal us. We worship you. We praise you. And we worship you. We thank you in advance. Oh, for loving us and healing our bodies. For healing our bodies. We thank you, God. By your stripes. Blood, it was shed already in the blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give me praise. Give me glory. Give me glory. Lord, I pray you touch him, God. Lord, he's trusting you. He's trusting you for this job right now, God. Lord, he's trusting you for the job, God. It's going to come forth, God, in Jesus' name, a better job, more money. I pray right now, God, that you heal uh, and uh, touch uh, this uh, uh, situation that's in his uh, family, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, give him that job. Better finances, better hours. Hours that he comes to church on Sunday, Lord. He loves you, Lord. I lift him up to you now. Give him favor in the workforce. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lift up over my shoulder. Oh, la 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 He go to head and above a shoulder. Mahaya. Oh, la 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you in advance, God. Lift up over my shoulder, my mind. Help me right here. Uh, Greater anointing, God. Lord, you done gave it to him, God. Oh, God. He is one of your preachers. God, he preaches the gospel to those children. God, he's a youth director, God. Lord, he, he's got a love in his heart for him, God. Give him a greater anointing, God. Let him hear your voice clear, God. Let the bobo shoot on the maha like a bashundai. He could take a head and a bobo shoot on the maha. Oh, anoint his hands greater, God. Lord, give him strength, God, and I speak healing in his body. I rebuke uh, those things that the doctors are trying to say. His body is healed in Jesus' name. That blood work is going to show a uh, uh, healthiness, a uh, uh, positive, God, in Jesus' name, God. He's healed in the name of Jesus. God, he's already healed, and he claims it in his heart, God. He's your servant, God. Lord, he's your servant. He's your servant, God. Lord, heal his body totally, God, in Jesus' name. Oh, I speak healing on him. I know, God, you know what it is. He's healed. He's healed. We agree with him. His body's healed. In the name of Jesus, we command it to go from him. In Jesus' name. Oh, la la maha da kabashu. Hit the bobo bo shula la maha. Yes, in Jesus' name. Command it in Jesus' name be healed. Wukatate, ilana tatata ba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, he's healed. He's healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hit the bobo bo shula la maha da kabashu. Oh, la katate, de la babashu. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, touch our brother right now, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, he's totally healed now, God. This body, the Lord, is healed, God. The, the Lord, you've taken care of some things, God. The, in this body, and I pray he's healed totally right now, God. The, I speak health upon him, God. In Jesus' name, God, we give you praise. We give you glory, God. Ikote te te mama la la ba shukata na maya, ala la ba shunai. 
Oh, de 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 la la baba shukata la ma. Jesus, Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, the one with the agape love. You love us, yeah. You love us, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Eto bo 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 shuta la ma ada kabashonda. Eto bo 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 shuta la ma. Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. We ask you, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. How great is our God. How great is He. Worship Him now. Worship Him. Hallelujah. One more. Strength, God. I have strength and encouragement, God. In the mighty way, God, in Jesus' name, God. The Lord, help her to handle these things that come in her, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Shoot on her mind in the name of Jesus, God. Healing, God, you said, God, that you heal. Jesus. Ha ha. Oh, replace that with joy. Joy unspeakable. Joy unspeakable. Strength, encouragement, God. The Lord, she's your servant, God. Shoot on her mind. Eat on the day. Shoot on her mind. In the name of Jesus, God. Let it come forth, God. In Jesus' name. Oh, today. Oh, today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Okay, everybody just praise you. Raise your hands now. Just praise you. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. It's an honor to raise your hand to the king. It's an honor. Hallelujah. Raise your hand to the king and praise him. How great is our God. He's a great God. Ha, ha. He loves you too. The name of oh yes, he loves you. 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 Oh, we praise you, God. We worship you. We love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship him. Hallelujah. Yes, he's worthy of all our praise. God, we thank you right now for answering prayer. We thank you, God, for answering prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Amen, brother. Anointed. Anointed. Hey, praise God. How great is our God. Hallelujah. Feels good to be in the presence of God, doesn't it? Well, he's here. I know he's here because my Bible tells me we're two or three together there I'm also. So I know he's here and I feel it. It's good to feel him. Sometimes you don't. You just got to press on in faith. But he's here. Amen. Praise God. He's a God we can cry out to. I asked that you give me some ushers. and We're going to move forward here. Praise God. Give me some ushers this morning. <clears throat> I like it when God takes control, don't you? Amen. We listening. We we. He's the one leading this service, not us. Ha ha. Praise God. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for getting our missionaries up to Dominican safe, oh God. And Lord God, just be with them. And Lord, just bless his tithes and offering and use them up with your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, Don. Go ahead, guys. You got something on your heart? Church. Thank you, brothers. God bless you. Sister Donna, I believe you have a special. Come on. I think it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ronnie's going to put up the...
things. God, what do you want? Amen. And God started showing me certain people that he wanted uh, prayer for. So we obey him. Amen. That's what we're here for. Today is the day that the Lord hath made. I will be glad and rejoice. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And if you got your Bibles and uh, you want to follow along with me this morning, and uh, we uh, thank you. And you know, I was asking God, I've been studying all week this message and uh, never could come up with a name. What, 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 what are you trying to show me here, Lord? And last night I got the name of it. <laughs> and, and I'm going in some areas that God wants me to go into. You know, God knows best, doesn't he? He knows everybody. He knows everything. He knows every heart. He knows what's going on in the congregation. I tell you right now, sometimes things goes on in our life that uh, we don't tell a lot of people about, but it's going on. And all of a sudden, you come to God's house and you'll get uh, what uh, a message or something that God's speaking to you in your heart. Amen. And usually, when uh, God does that, uh, He's speaking to the preacher and uh, and the congregation because He knows the Holy Spirit knows uh, what's needed. Amen. Praise God. And you know, uh, ever what God gives me, I'm going to preach, whether it's uh, sometimes I don't like to preach some of it, uh, whatever it is. I'm going to do it because God said do it. Amen. He's the one that's leading and directing. Praise God. So what I'm ministering on today is vengeance is of the Lord. And, and my wife's over there with the kids and uh, I think uh, uh, Sister Marquita taking care of the kids. You know, me and my wife was coming to work this morning. We was talking about the Lord, you know, and we was talking about some things uh, and I said, and we was talking about some terrible things we'd seen on TV about these uh, uh, sex wackos over there in Taiwan and places like that selling little children for sex and stuff like that. Evil like you can't imagine. You know what's going on in the world today is evil like in Noel's day, like the Bible said it was going to do. Evil's going on today and starting to get worse and worse just like it did in Noel's day and God stopped it, praise God. I'm looking forward to God to stop what's going on in our world today. There's fighting and feuding and stuff going on all over the world, wars, all kind of civil wars and stuff is happening and we need to pray that God's going to move and stop some of it. But I tell you right now, me and wife got talking about that evilness of these uh, perverts that's coming after uh, these children and everything. It just made my made me angry and mad and I tell you what we'd do with them, just kill them. There ain't no mercy. Kill them. And my wife's talking about, yeah, that's what we need to do, you know. And you know what was going on there? The flesh was rising up. Well, you know, God has told us some different things to do, you know. The Lord said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. I don't care what people do or what happens out there. Some of these people think they're getting away with a perversion or this uh, uh, sex of adultery and they're getting away with this uh, uh, murder and lying and doing all these things. One day they're going to stand before the Lord thy God and God say, do you remember? Uh-huh. <laughs> they're going to remember. And if they ain't received the Lord Jesus as Savior and Lord... It's going to be a bad scene. It's going to be a bad scene. But I'm here to tell you this morning, God uh, said, vengeance is mine. And me and my wife had to repent, God. We repent because you know why? Did you know that Jesus loved each one of you this morning before you became a Christian? He loved you. Did you know that uh, you was an enemy of the gospel before you got saved? <laughs> Did you know Jesus, God loved you then? We're supposed to be like him, ain't we? I'm here to tell you this morning, I'm going to be honest with you, it's hard for this flesh to do it sometimes. There's certain times the flesh wants to rise up and fix it, you know. But praise God, we do have civil laws and we got certain laws uh, that come against some of this evil that's going on. But there's a lot of evil going on in the world that uh, we can't uh, control right now, but we can cry out to God and ask God to do it. And we can voice our opinion to our senators and our congressmen that's going on in our White House that ain't right and laws that's coming forth like abortion that's against God. I don't care if it is a law of the land, it's wrong and we need to stand up against it as Christians and tell them so, Amen. We need to do that. <coughs> I tell you, I've seen on, uh, I like to watch that good news, not the news, the, the, the one of uh, the Israeli, well, Fox and the Israeli news tells it like it is. Woody, I watch it at 6.30 in the morning on Sunday. It's talking about more Christians was killed uh, uh, in 2013. It had doubled the Christians killed because of their belief. 
Can you imagine that's going on today? Well, it is, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. We see it, and we see it, and we see it. I'm telling you, as I looked at the, some of the news this morning, civil war going on here, taking amphetamines so they can sponsor their civil war in Syria. All of this stuff is happening all over the world. Iran, North Korea, everybody wants to kill everybody, or everybody wants to be the ruler and uh, over somebody. I tell you right now, just like old Noel's day, I used to read that, and in Noel's day, they were giving in marriage and doing all these things. They were doing evil, and it was so bad that the Lord God had to repent himself. I'm going to destroy everybody, but Praise God, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And they followed the Lord and they obeyed the Lord. And praise God, uh, because of that, eight souls were saved because of that. Amen? Now, I'm going to get up here in God's Word and I'm going to look and see what God's Word says. In 1 Timothy, I'm going to read a, a scripture here. <clears throat> and it's talking about Alexander the coppersmith was coming against old Paul. Old Paul's out there ministering the Word and doing what he ought to do. And Alexander, uh, Alexander the coppersmith was coming against him with much evil. And I like what old Paul said. I have to do this every now and then. I got to make sure the flesh don't rise up. You know, the Bible says vengeance of mine, I will repay. Those people that think they've done all these uh, things and killed people and done all this and got away with it in a way, in a matter, they better, if they ain't repented of it to the Lord, they better look out because they will have to pay their dues one day, you know. These liars that's out there and all these people that's doing harm to humanity and everything, they'll have to pay a price one day. They'll be re it'll be reckoned between them and Almighty God. Amen? I'm here to tell you. But God loves us so much, you know, we, we can repent and ask God to help us. You know, sometimes we did things in ignorance. Did you know even Paul blasphemed uh, uh, the Lord in ignorance, so he did it in ignorance, and when he did it in ignorance, he cried out to God, and guess what? He got saved, didn't he? And he got to became a, a great uh, man, apostle of God, and did all those things. I can show you that in God's Word as I was reading and studying some of these things. But I want to tell you about Alexander the coppersmith. He did much evil against Paul, and this is what old Paul said. I like what he said there. Look at here. He said, uh, the, ro the Lord, it said to Alexander and, and uh what is it? Uh, the enemy of the gospel. In 2 Timothy 4.14, there you go. Thank you, Ronnie. Alexander the coffersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works, you know. I tell you right now, I've had people uh, come against uh, me and do things uh, in a bad way or something. I just uh, use that uh, scripture sometimes. God, uh, reward him according to his uh, works. If it's good, reward him. If it's bad, reward him in a speedingly way. I can pray like that. <laughs> Paul did, didn't he? He said, reward him according to his works because he was doing all that evil. And Paul's desire and God's desire, uh, he's going, you, you know, I don't care, Ronnie, what uh, a man sows, he's going to reap it. If you sow good, you're going to reap good. If you sow bad, you're going to reap bad. That's God's word and it's going to come forth like he said, Amen. I tell you right now, <clears throat> all these people out there in the world are being deceived if they think they can go forth and, and they think they're doing good by killing their brother or, or their neighbors. You got all these people out there that's uh, under different kind of religions and they think they can go out there and kill all these people and do all this stuff. That ain't godly. That ain't got nothing to do with God. They serving the wrong God. They better get a hold of the right God and they better not be deceived or they're going to suffer the consequences for it. <laughs> now, let's look in God's Word. I want to look in 1 Timothy 1, uh, 9, verse 19 and 20. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck already. Some had faith. They was a believer. They followed God, but they shipwrecked their faith, and they got into error. We're going to look at that. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Now, I'll tell you right now, I can show you a scripture in the Bible where old Paul blasphemed. The Bible says, uh, you know, God will forgive blaspheme of men, but the Bible says if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, uh, he will not uh, forgive it in this world or the world to come. That's a serious thing. We're going to look a little bit further, though. Look at here. It said, uh, we just looked and seen where it said, uh, 1 Timothy 
uh, it talked about uh, shipwrecked faith. In other words, he put away uh, his faith that he had. You know, I tell you right now, I've seen some people that was on fire for God and they got in a backslidden condition and uh, their faith became uh, shipwrecked because they denied the faith. They walked away from it. Now, some of them are apostates. They walk away, away from it and they won't come back. But now some of them are backslidden and praise God, we can cry out to the Lord and guess what? Uh, God's a mighty God. Maybe he'll put them under certain convictions or things uh, that are drawing back to the cross, amen, and they'll repent and come back to be, little, be with the Lord. But I tell you, there's some apostates who will uh, was believers and they denied the blood of Jesus and they walked away from God. Those are the ones that really become evil. I'm telling you, those that knew the faith and then walked away from it, man, it gets, uh, they get really hard. I'm telling you. We got people in the world that do that. But I want to tell you, you know, the ones that turned away from their faith, we can, I can show you time, departed from it, uh, you know, uh, abandoning it. I can show you in the Bible, uh, uh, they obeyed and then they disobeyed. You know, con and uh, I can show you that time and time again. The Bible wouldn't have it in there about uh, their faith being shipwrecked if it, that wasn't possible, amen? Let's go a little bit further here and look uh, uh, in God's word. You know, uh, I want to look at Galatians uh, uh, 6, 7, and 8. It talks about whosoever, whatsoever a man soweth, uh, uh, that shall he reap. I'll tell you right now, If you, I, when, I, when I was a, a sinner years ago, 25 years ago or so. I mean, I was a sinner. Man, I planted some bad seed in my time. I tell you, some of that seed I planted wants to come up before me sometimes. Uh, the devil trying to throw it up there. But you know what I tell the devil? And I, and I repent of it. God, I'm sorry I did that. And God hears me. And uh, I repent of it. It's under the blood, praise God. But I'll tell you right now, when I planted that bad seed, guess what? I had a harvest come up. And that harvest was a lot worse than what I planted. I, I'm, a, I'm a planter. I like to plant corn and maters and hot peppers and stuff like that. And when I put that one uh, grain of corn in there, Woody, a bunch more corn comes up, three or four stalks. Boy, I get to get in that and eat all that, you know. A big harvest. That's just like when you plant bad seed, the, the, it's going to come up and it's going to be a worse harvest than what you planted. I know I can tell you that from experience. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. But I praise Almighty God that God's a God that forgives and he cleanses, praise God, because if he didn't, I wouldn't have no hope today, would you? We would not have no hope if it wasn't for a merciful God who give us that mercy and grace, praise God. He's a God who loves us and cares about us and he put all of that under the blood and he remembers it no more. Isn't that exciting? Because if he didn't, we wouldn't have no hope today, would we? But I'm here to tell you, I want to just talk to you a little bit about this too. You know, God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. You know, I'm here to tell you that sometimes people do things against you and it hurts you and it upsets you and everything. What are you supposed to do as a Christian? You're supposed to pray to God and ask God to give me the mercy and grace to forgive them for what they did for me and you got to go for it. And when you do that, the tormentors will leave you alone. That's another thing I could get into. I could preach on them tormentors. I know all about that because I've been there too. I've been around them tormentors and they tormented me day and night, 24 hours a day for about uh, almost a year or so uh, when I was seven and a half months, couldn't sleep at night. Two or three o'clock in the morning, I was, hate, anger was on me. And praise God, I come to the point in my life uh, where I read the scriptures and I studied and I cried out. The flesh didn't want to do it, but I kept crying out to God. And after about seven and a half months, I forgive those that hurt me, praise God. I bowed to my God and humbled to him. And the Bible says, love your neighbors yourself. I pray for them that they'll be saved. One of them called me crying and weeping begging me to forgive him six months after the incident. And he begging me, and I said, let me tell you something. I forgive you six months ago. I said, you go forth in the Lord. And boy, when I forgave them people that hurt me, the tormentors left me, and I was able to sleep God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. You know, they got to answer to that, not me, because I put it under the blood. I did what God's word said do. I put it under the blood, amen? Hallelujah. And uh, so uh, they left me when it happened. Praise God. But uh, those people was in torment then because, see, I, I went ahead and, and fixed up my issue, and they hadn't, and they was in having some problems there, you know? Huh? What did they do? Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> it's some bad stuff, but God's a God that forgives, amen? 
Praise God, he's a mighty God. I'll tell you this part, Woody. When I was so angry and mad, I was wanting to uh, kill some people and planning on doing it. And God spoke to me and said, and I was telling some people about it, and God spoke to me and said, uh, would you like for me to put your sins on that bull board? That's heavy, ain't it? Would you like for God to put all your sins upon the bull board so everybody could see it? We've all been there, ain't we? That's what God spoke to me and told me. And boy, when he did, I shut my mouth and I started praying and asking God for mercy and grace and to help me, and he did, amen, he did, praise God. He stopped all them things. That's right, that's right. You was in, this man right here, Woody, was in that shape, and me and Roy was in the, uh, he was in that position. Yeah, Woody was fixing to do something that was really bad, but God sent me and Roy to McDonald's. Ain't that where we met you, Woody? For some reason, me and Roy went to McDonald's. I don't know why. I was rolling by that and see your two heads sitting there. He seen us sitting there. He pulled in. He was already planning to do something that was really bad. He showed in. But we witnessed uh, Woody, and I'd been in some of the position that he has been in, and God got a hold of him, and he's here today. Praise God. Your position saved me. Hey, yep. yeah, see, see right there? What I had went through and I was able to testify to him saved him from doing the same thing. Now, that's a, that's a testimony in it. I forgot about that, Woody. Thank you. <laughs> you give God a praise, not me. And, and Roy, uh, the Lord sent me and Roy there for that reason. We just laid on our heart. We're supposed to go to that McDonald's and sit there, and, and here comes Woody, and he was in bad shape. I remember you when it was going on, Woody. But God... Settled it, didn't he? Praise God. He's a mighty God. You see, he can forgive us, can't he, for, for some things. I'm not going to get into details either because, you know, that's behind us, praise God. And, and uh, we pray God just moves and we ain't got to worry. Why? Because Jesus, God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So we look at that. When you got things going on in your job and stuff like that, people coming at you, you know, Bible says no weapon formed against you will prosper. You see, God's in control. If you'll give it to him, amen, he will control it. I remember, I'm going to give you another example here uh, this morning. I remember one time when I had a church in uh, Greenwood, South Carolina. These people come to the church, a group of them, and they started coming, and we started praising God, and God had given me a vision of what to do, you know, and everything, and they come and try to kind of take the church over, and they wanted to control by them. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. And I just kind of stood up and said, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to them, this ain't going to happen. God's given me a vision of this uh, work here, and that's the way it's going to be. God comes first, you know. And so it kept uh, going on a little bit there, and guess what I started doing, Gary? I started praying a lot and crying out to the Lord. And I'll never forget, one time, it, it was a work that started in a house. We started going to this man's house, and uh, he had shot himself with the three fifty seven Magnum in the head, and it paralyzed him. His mama was having to take care of him, and she asked us, would we come down there and preach a little bit and pray a little bit? So we started it and started preaching a little bit and praying a little bit, and uh, all of a sudden, people started coming, man, for about five or six months, or we'd bring the little guitars in there, Richard, whacking it a little bit, you know, and praising God, and all of a sudden, the people started coming to that house, and they filled that house up, and all of a sudden, didn't have no room, and God told me to go out and get a building. But right before that happened, these people that was coming was going to take, try to take the work over, and God was doing the work, you know. And so I done got up my mind. I said, the, 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 the night I was in there preaching and praising God, you know, in that house, and it slammed full of cars parked everywhere out there in the community. And we didn't have room, you know. And uh, I, was, I told God, I said, God, I'm going to handle this tomorrow morning. I'm going to tell them people to hit the road. I'm going to get them. Uh, my flesh is rising up, you know. And there was a lady come from Greenville, her and her husband. I'll never forget it, Bill Posey and Rachel. <clears throat> and I love them to death. They've been on a missionary. I've been on a missionary trip with them for many years. And uh, they came, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, Rachel prophesied, said, uh, you know, uh, the Lord thy God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. The Lord thy God said, uh, don't you do uh, that, uh, that he will handle that situation. I mean, he just kind of started speaking. They didn't know what it, what it was. You know, I'm sitting, it's like God was speaking to me, Vernon. He was speaking to me. And he told me what to do. Don't do nothing, I'll handle it. See, I was going to do it the next day. And so guess what? I didn't do nothing. God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. I didn't do nothing. So I waited about a week there, you know, and I won't never forget it. I was out there in my backyard one Friday evening, I think it was, after work. And boy, I was out there and had my little garden, my maters and everything. You know, I was uh, hoeing around in that uh, little garden, you know. And all of a sudden, the van pulls up with 
three of them guys in it. And they got out and they come to me and they said, Brother Rick, uh, here's your key to your church. I said, uh, we have decided to go and start our own work. And uh, I, I didn't, I said, is that right? You decided to go and start your own work? Well, that's good. That's good. Thank you for the key. I hope everything goes well. And they got in the van and they left. I was in that little tomato plant and I got that home. I said, praise God, hallelujah, God worked it out here. It's a done deal. Woo! I didn't have to do what the flesh wanted to do because God did it, amen? You see, they sometimes in our, our workplace, our job and stuff like that, you know, I can remember many battles I had in my job and I had to cry out to God and God gave me scripture. Hey, no word for him to get you will prosper. He's he going to take care of it, amen? And I watched take, uh, God take care of it. Many times, God said, vengeance is mine. So it, that goes back to the principle, what you sow, you're going to reap it. And I tell you right now, when you become a Christian, you start sowing those good things and doing the right thing, and you're going to be persecuted for it, and you're going to be, tribulation is going to come at you. Why? Because you're a Christian, you love God. That's the big thing right there. People see Jesus in you. They coming at Jesus. They ain't coming at you. They think they are. You just keep crying out to the Lord because he's going to take care of you. I tell you right now, I was teaching Sunday school this morning and the word was talking about, uh, you know, death to us ain't no big deal. We don't fear man because what he can do to us. We fear the one and reverence the one who can do something. He can send you to hell or heaven. His name is the Lord thy God. That's the one we fear in reverence to him because he loves us so much. You know, I'm telling you right now, we can look at death and stuff like that as a liberation. We're going to be liberated uh, when we die. We're going to be with the Lord, amen? We got some, something to rejoice about and some hope in here this morning that we can be. We're going to be with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, amen? We have got uh, purpose while we're here, but when we're gone, we got purpose. We're going to be with him. By the way, I'm going to be on a big white horse, and I ain't going to be allergic to it. <coughs> Horses, I'm allergic to it. I'm going to be riding with the Lord, the King of kings. We're going to come back in Arbogana, and we're going to do it. I'm going to be with him. You've got the Lord Jesus in your heart. You're going to be with him too. All Christians are going to be. We're going to be saints and priests and kings with him. We're going to have rule and reign with him. We can rejoice about that and be glad. Amen? But the Lord talks about it. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord thy God. <laughs> and when we get that in our heart and our spirit in situation, I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes situation, the flesh rises up and you want to, it's the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth syndrome, ain't it, Woody? That's what we're raised up with. But when we become a Christian, it changes to something else. Amen? That's the way it changes, praise God. Let's go to another. Whatsoever man soweth, uh, he's going to read. Let's look here. Galatians 6, uh, it, uh, uh, Galatians uh, 6, 7, 8 says, Be not deceived. God is not marked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's the bottom line. That's, that's a good deal. I like that. You sow good stuff, you're going to reap good harvest. You sow bad stuff, you're going to reap a bad harvest. I've done both. Praise God, I've got the good harvest coming in now. Amen, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. What's that other verse right there? For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap and uh, corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting with him. Amen. We can rejoice about that this morning. We can rejoice because he's in control. He's God. That's who he is. I want to show you a few things here this morning too. Now, we looked at 2 Tim uh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Let's look at 2 Timothy 2, 14 and 18. I mean, 2, yeah. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 14, 18 and 19. Uh, I believe it is, Ronnie. Let me see. Oh, okay, 14, 3. Right, there you go. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to non-profit but to the subverting of the hearers look at here next verse right here study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that uh, uh, needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word uh, uh concerning the truth in verse uh, let's look at verse 18 and 19 right there yeah who concerning the truth have erred now there's some that knew the truth and were believers and they have erred right here. 
who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrown, faith of some. In other words, there were some people that were believers, and we're talking about it a while ago, Alexander the coppersmith and the other guy, they had, uh, uh, one of them was a believer, and he threw his uh, belief away, and he went out there and started uh, preaching himself in error that was wrong. <clears throat> Look at verse uh, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from uh, inequity. Now, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Concerning the truth, they have erred away. Uh, uh, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy. I got that wrote down probably wrong, Ronnie. 2 Timothy 2, 14, verse 18, 19. 2 Timothy 14. <clears throat> That's a good word too. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 2, 4. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, well, I see it. Yeah, there you go. Let's go to verse 19 right there. 2 Timothy 2, Verse 19, that's the one I want right there. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from an equity. Now, let's go down a little bit further right here. <clears throat> you know, there's false teachers and stuff out there that's deceiving a lot of people. Now, the guy, uh, this Alexander the coppersmith, he did much evil. The Lord rewards you according to his works. What he did, he was opposing the gospel. He was leading people astray. He was an enemy of the gospel. He was leading people astray. And God says, vengeance of mine, I will repay. I want to look right here and uh, I want to go to, uh, well, let's go to Matthew 12, 31. I want to read that about blaspheming a little bit. I want to read that right there. Matthew 12, 31. I think I got that in order, Ronnie. <coughs> it talks about, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blaspheme shall be forgiven unto men. What did that say? It says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blaspheme shall be forgiven unto men. So men blaspheme and curse each other and do them things, God will forgive them. But the blaspheme against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men in this world or the world to come. And what that is is people, uh, and that's not in ignorance, that is people that were believers and go out there and they start blaspheming God, uh, claiming Satan did that miracle and stuff like that. That ain't good. That's the one, if they do it uh, intentionally like some of the Pharisees was doing, that's blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. It will not be forgiven them. That's a heavy one right there, right there. But I wanted to put that in there. But I want now I want to go to Romans 12, 19, and 21. <coughs> We're going to uh, 19, 21. Before we do, I want to tell you just a little bit more of some of the some of the uh, uh, the stuff that talks about explaining what blasphemy is, blasphemy is. Uh, it's any insulting remark or curse even attributing to Satan. In other words, if somebody that knows better and they have a remark, uh, you know, like the Pharisees told him, he's casting out uh, uh, the devil with Beelzebub. That's the devil casting out the devil. That don't work, does it? The devil ain't going to cast out the devil. Almighty God was doing it through the power of God. It's greater than Beelzebub. Hallelujah, praise God. But the Pharisees were saying he was doing it that they were blaspheming God because the Pharisees knew that he was a man of God from some of the stuff he was doing. I'm using that as an example this morning. Look here. Explaining what blasphemy is. It is any insulting remark or curse even attributing to Satan the works of the Holy Ghost. It is unforgivable if it is done modestly and knowingly as here in Hebrews. We could go to Hebrews and look at some of that, but we won't, don't have time to do that this morning. I just want to explain that just a little bit. Let's go to Romans 12, 19, and 21. It talks about vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. You ain't got to worry about the, the blaspheme thing. You love the Lord. You're a believer. Praise God. You go forth. You know, I could show you down there in 1 Timothy 1, 13 where uh, it said that uh, at the old Paul, he was a blasphemer, but he did it in ignorance. He didn't know. See, there's a difference. But when he got saved and on fire for the Lord, he knew right from wrong. 
God forgive him for that cursing and doing those things. It was it was bad, uh, you know, speaking evil of people and railing and and uh, slanders and stuff like that. You know, God forgives uh, that, but the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, He don't. Look at here, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine; I will repay, saith the Lord. The Bible says, Vengeance is mine; I will repay, saith the Lord. So you as a Christian need to hold on to that. Because I'm telling you right now, sometimes you'll get uh, uh, things happen in your life that will come against you in the workplace. It might come against you uh, in the community out there. It might come against you with your family, all kind of areas like that. But what you're supposed to do is show love, the love Jesus had. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I have to pray. I have to pray, God, give me the love that Jesus had. Because sometimes the love that I have ain't where it ought to be and it rises up in me in an angryish way it's not right I pray God to help me do the right thing I'll give you an example a, a, a day before yesterday me and the wife was somewhere we was getting a, a mocha at one of the restaurant places you know we like a mocha every now and then and we was getting it and they said we're going out there and eat this food and said we'll bring it out to you because the machine was messed up we'll bring it out to you well, we went over there and we prayed over our food and we was eating our food. Everything's going on pretty good there, but I was getting thirsty eating that food, be honest. <laughs> and finally, we got through of our food and our mochas hadn't arrived yet. Well, the flesh was rising up in me. I was going up there and let me tell you. <laughs> I went up there, boy, I had to fire in my eyes. And I stood up there and I said, where's our mochas at? And the girl that said that she was going to give us our mocha, she looked and said, oh, and they was real busy. Said, oh, I'm sorry. Said, let me fix it. So she went, and I didn't. All of a sudden, God came on me, and rage didn't come out of me, Marty. Because <laughs> it's just a mocha. What's a mocha? And, I, and the peace of the Lord came on me, and she looked me right in the eyes, and she got over there, and she fixed us two large ones. We ordered small ones. She said, I'm going to fix y'all two real nice big ones here. And she looked me square in the eyes said, I'm sorry. Man, when she done that, I mailed it. Like, <laughs> you know, that flesh done rose up in me. I just mailed it. You know what I mean? I just mailed it. And I said, God, I'm supposed to be like Jesus. And so, bingo. You see how just little incidents like that, you can show the love of Jesus, how it will help you and the people around you. Amen? We can see that. Now, I want to tell you another little thing right here for you. In Deuteronomy 32, 39 through 43, I want to read just a little about that. Uh, them uh, Hebrews was going through some uh, vengeance and people was coming against them and all kind of stuff was going on. And uh, uh, I want to look, uh, be not overcome evil, but overcome evil with good. Ronnie, let's go to Deuteronomy 32, 39 through 43. <coughs> Praise God, amen. I tell you right now, you get in that blasphemy of the Holy Ghost and all that, that's another message by itself if you really get in it and go deep in it, you know. But God's a mighty God, and he loves us. Praise God. Let's go right here and look. I want to see it. See that thy even I am he, and there is no God uh, with me I kill and I make alive I wound and I heal neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand now this is God telling who he is I am he there's no God with me God's the only God that can kill and he can make alive the other gods of the world can't do that because they all dead our God is alive he is the true living God Praise God, and he can, he can heal or he can kill. That's what he can do because he's the one who created us, amen? Let's go a little bit further. He can heal too. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Man, he's the eternal God. That's who he is, the true living God. Let's go a little bit further right here and see what God's word says. <clears throat> if I, when my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render what? Vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. So see, vengeance, God is going, God is a, if it wasn't for, you know, he's going to uh, uh, avenge for us because we're his children. 
And he's telling them Hebrews, uh, they some, they've done some wrong and I'm going to do some stuff. Look here. <clears throat> I will make my arrows. I like this part right here. Some of us in here are bow hunters and we know a little bit about arrows. The quiver can be full of arrows, you know. This is talking about uh, I make my arrows drunk with blood. Now, God, talking about his arrows, sometimes his arrows uh, are Arrows of God are judgments of God, uh, they sometimes call. Sometimes God will throw an arrow out, it'll be a judgment on somebody. And I can tell you somebody he judged, Sodom and Gomorrah. He threw the arrow on him, didn't he? And by the way, when God throws an arrow out, it don't miss. He threw the arrow on Sodom and Gomorrah, didn't he? Look here, look around. I will make my arrows drunk. Uh, with blood and my sword shall devour flesh uh, and uh, that with the blood of the slain of the captives uh, from the beginning uh, uh, revenges up unto the uh, enemy. Let's go a little bit further right there. <coughs> rejoice. Oh, I like that part right there. It says rejoice because we're in the Lord. We can rejoice, amen. Rejoice, O you nations with his people for he will avenge the blood of his servants. And we'll render vengeance to his adversaries and we'll be merciful unto his land and to his people. Now, God's going to be merciful for us. We can rejoice about that. But I'm here to tell you right now, those that's an enemy of the gospel in Jesus Christ, revenge is going to come on him. And let me show you a few of the arrows that God has to throw out there. <coughs> and some of these arrows, you can find them in uh, De uh, Deuteronomy. We look in there. I'm not going to the scriptures, but some of his arrows are called uh, the burning with hunger, the loss of crops, famine, stuff like that. That's happening all over the world today, ain't it? They saw that stuff going when God throws an arrow out there. You know, guess what? Uh, uh, burning with heat and no rain. I tell you right now, I've had my garden sometimes, and uh, there ain't no rain or something hit that garden. Uh, the crop's going to fail. It's going to fail. Well, guess who controls the rain and the things of the world? Our God does. Our God controls it, praise God. Now, we can see bitter destruction. We can see plagues and various kinds. I tell you right now, these diseases going on in, in the world right now that uh, used to not be, man, there's all kind of stuff going on out there. God's a God who can throw an arrow to somebody that's doing wrong. I tell you right now, when them Hebrews did wrong and didn't follow God, uh, they lived in a destructive manner. They were uh, captive to other people. But when they did right, God avenged them and brought them forward and he blessed them. And that can happen to America real quick. Uh, we as children of God need to cry out and pray for our great country, America. Because America, uh, uh, in God we trust, praise God, but people are turning away uh, from God. They want him out, uh, all kind of things. I tell you, I seen the other day where, you know, the Ten Commandments was on some place in Oklahoma in the courthouse or something. Well, the Satanists come up there and they wanted to put their little emblem of the devil up there. Now, I tell you right now, there's a balance, Christian. I mean, the devil represents evil and corruption and killing and evil things. Now, there's a time that our courthouse and our laws need to come against that. That's wrong. Come against that and get it out. Lest you be consumed with it. Get it out. We got to stand up for what's right. Amen. I tell you right now, and another error of God is the sword. What is that? Wars. Are they wars going on everywhere? Man, they wars going on all around us. And it's getting worse and worse. Another error is God. It's terror within. What is terror within? Well, look at Syria. It's terror within that country. Civil war going on. They're fighting against each other, killing each other. Civil war going on right in that country. It can go on and spread. When God throws an arrow, you better look out. He threw one at Sodom and Gomorrah, didn't he? I tell you right now, we got to be uh, in tune with the Lord. We got to cry out to God because He's a mighty God. We got to remember, though, try to uh, stand. Uh, vengeance is mine, I will repay. All these things that's happening in the world uh, today is doing this vengeance and stuff. Oh, they're going to pay a price for that. But you and I is a, a Christian, a king. Our king, praise God, is king of kings and Lord of lords. We need to rejoice, praise God, amen. We need to rejoice because the Lord's coming back. We need to rejoice because the Lord is in control of everything. I tell you right now, we need to do our part. Our part is to stand 
and purpose uh, as a Christian, we're supposed to stand. You think you could stand if you was over there in Syria and they come into church and said, uh, you, these churches uh, in North Korea that don't even exist, no more Christian churches. And they wonder why. Because they killed them. They destroyed them. These churches in Syria right now, Christian churches that's being burned and the Christians, they, they come in there to worship God and they're being tortured and killed on the spot. Now you think those people that's doing that is of God? They think they're serving their God. They're serving their God of evil. That's evil. That's evil. And they'll pay a price because God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. We've seen that today. We could go deeper in God's word and see more and more of it. I'm telling you things that's happening in this world all around us. It's getting like Noel's day. I tell you right now, we need to be on our knees crying out to God in a daily manner, crying out for our brothers and sisters and doing those things uh, that God has given us purpose to do. Why are we here? Because, you know, you're not very, there's some influential people that's dead in the grave, but guess what? They can't do a bit of good because they did in the grave. But you and I here this day are alive. You still breathe in air. You still have influence. You still have purpose. You still can do things for Almighty God while you're here. We need to do it. Amen. We need to ask God to make us stronger because I'm going to tell you, persecution is coming. God said, don't worry about though. He overcome. We're going to be overcomers through him. And we're going to be liberated when we get to be with him. Amen. Praise God. I want to pray for the folks on the internet. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. If you want this Jesus uh, we're talking about, uh, he's the liberator, praise God, praise God. And he loves you so much. If you want him uh, and you want to have a love in your heart that you never had before, I pray that you'll just submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says you seek him if you ask. If you ask and seek and knock, uh, he said he will be found. I pray that uh, you'll just ask God to come in your heart and ask uh, God to, <coughs> that you will be found. Uh, he will find you. Ask God if you with sincereness say, God, I want to know this Jesus. He'll come to you. You can know him. Ask him to come in your heart. The Bible says uh, if you confess your sins and cry out to him, he'll forgive you of your sins. Ask God. Tell him, say, Lord, I repent in the name of Jesus. That's your authority in the name of Jesus. Uh, the Bible says uh, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. You got to seek him first, praise God. The Bible says, uh, I'm the way, the truth. No man come to the Father but by me. You can't get to God except through his son, Jesus. I pray you'll receive him in your heart and ask him to forgive you for sins. And I ask God to put joy on you like you never had before in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. And if you prayed that prayer, uh, write us, put on there. Brother Rick, I prayed that prayer under contacts. Just drop me a little note and say, Brother Rick, I prayed it because we want to rejoice with you. God loves you and God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Praise God.